What's up students? I'm Albert Inchinali and welcome to another informative CSEC social studies session. If you have been watching week after week, big up yourselves. A special shout out if you're from Linden, Letim, Oriala, Mabaruma, The Quarantine, Bartica. It's great that you're able to access the learning channel and it's a pleasure to share with you. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please drop me an email at albertinchinali at gmail.com. Now, today's lesson is all about CARICOM. I'm sure you've heard the term before, but what does it mean? Well, what comes to mind when you think of CARICOM? If you live in Region 4, you probably think of the CARICOM Secretariat. If you've been paying attention to our politics in the last several months, you would have heard about the CARICOM Observer Team. While these are all associated with CARICOM, CARICOM in particular refers to the Caribbean community. Now, I can't think of a better way than to introduce today's lesson for you by sharing the CARICOM song. Yes, there's an official patriotic song of the Caribbean community. Do enjoy. From many distant lands, our forefathers came. Some seeking adventure, some bound in chains. Waged and fought through victory and pain. By test of their courage, our freedom was gained. In homage to those gone before us, us, the heroes of lands in the sun, we vow to join hands and to focus on building. Caribbean, raise your voices high, sing of your Caribbean pride, sing it loud and strong, feel our hearts beat as one, celebrate in song, as we rise to heights where we
I do trust that you enjoyed that wonderful video, that CARICOM song. What came to mind as you looked at that video? Yes, we saw diversity. We saw a merging of cultures. We saw persons coming together. We even heard different languages. We heard a bit of French-based Creole spoken in the Lesser Antilles and even the Suriname tongue known as Taki Taki. Speaking of languages, if we were to use the number of speakers to determine the major language of CARICOM, it would be Haitian Creole. Do you know why? That's because out of the 18 million people represented by CARICOM, 11 million are Haitians. Pretty interesting, isn't it? As we continue to discuss the progression of regional integration in the Caribbean, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to discuss the objectives of the Caribbean community under the Treaty of Chaguramas, identify the governing structure of CARICOM under the revised Treaty of Chaguramas, and identify the functions of the CARICOM Secretariat. First things first, as we look at the Treaty of Chaguramas, let's try to understand what a treaty is. Well, a treaty is a written formal agreement. It's pretty much similar to a contract. When two persons enter an agreement, they sign a contract. When two countries or multiple countries enter an agreement, they sign a treaty. Now, the Treaty of Chaguramas established the Caribbean community and common market, which was later known as CARICOM. It was signed on July 4th, 1973 in Chaguramas, Trinidad and Tobago. It was signed by Barbados, Guyana, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. The heads of state of these countries were the ones who signed the document. For Guyana, we had Forbes Burnham, our Prime Minister. For Barbados, Errol Barrow. For Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Eric Williams. And for Jamaica, Michael Manley. Now, even though the treaty was signed on July 4th, 1973, it came into effect on the 1st of August, 1973. The treaty also contained two separate agreements. One relating to the Caribbean community and the other, the Caribbean common market. The agreements were signed separately and Caribbean countries could choose membership of either the Caribbean community or the common market. Can you think of which country chose only to be a member of the Caribbean community and not the common market? Yes, that country is the Bahamas. Now that we will focus specifically on the Caribbean community, it is my pleasure to make mention of the 15 member states that make up the community. And I can't think of a better way to do that than to pretend that I'm hosting the opening ceremony of the Caribbean Festival of Arts, CARIFESTA. And it is my duty to introduce representatives of each member state. So, your task is to rate my hosting skills. Do you think you can do that? Alright then. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am pleased to introduce to you the delegates representing the 15 CARICOM member states in alphabetical order. Give it up for Antigua and Barbuda. Make some noise for the Bahamas. Welcome Barbados. Belize is in the house. Looking awesome, Dominica. Show some love for the Spice Island, Grenada. Next up is the oily Guyana. Give it up for Haiti. Wagwan, Jamaica. Greetings to you, Montserrat. Now with a cricket and a bat, the Zooks from St. Lucia. Ever so patriotic, welcome Sam Kitts and Nevis. Not far behind, big up St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Show some love for Suriname. 
Last but not least, the land of soca and somewhat confusingly chicken curry, Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you to all our delegates of these 15 CARICOM member states. Now on a scale of 1 to 5, how would you rate my hosting skills? I hope you give me a passing grade. Now in addition to the 15 member states of CARICOM, there are 5 associate member states who are members of most CARICOM institutions but who do not vote on decisions relating to CARICOM. These states are Anguilla, Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Now these member states all have something in common. Do you know what that is? Well, these member states, these associate member states, are all British overseas territories. That means they are colonies of Great Britain. So we won't consider these states as being sovereign. Now, as it relates to the objectives of CARICOM, they rest on four main areas, or what we call four main pillars. These four main pillars are economic integration, which usually is the basis for any kind of regional integration. The second pillar, foreign policy coordination which has to do with having a unified voice when engaging with third states. And third states mean those countries that are not part of the region, those countries that are not part of the regional integration body. The third pillar has to do with human and social development, things like health, education, or standards of living in the region. And the last pillar has to do with security, that is protecting our region, securing our borders, giving us travel documents to travel to each other's countries. All of that would fall under security. So let's recap. The four main pillars of CARICOM are economic integration, foreign policy coordination, human and social development, and lastly, security. Now, I have a little activity for you. I am going to tell you some stated objectives of CARICOM, and you are going to tell me which pillar they represent. Now, remember, the four main pillars of CARICOM are economic integration, foreign policy coordination, human and social development, and lastly, security. Now, the first stated objective of CARICOM that I'll share with you is to improve standards of living and work. To improve standards of living and work. In other words, to ensure that we have good wages, good salaries, good access to health care. We're exposed to quality education. Our water supply is great. What do you think the pillar is going to be? that is represented by this stated objective. Did you say human and social development? Yes, that is correct. Now, the second stated objective is to enhance levels of international competitiveness. To enhance levels of international competitiveness. In other words, how does the Caribbean region position itself to compete internationally? How do we place ourselves in a position whereby it's easier for us to trade with other trading blocks and to sign agreements with other countries, especially those that are more developed? So which pillar do you think speaks specifically to enhanced levels of international competitiveness? Did you say foreign policy coordination? Of course you did. That is correct. Look at the terms. International, foreign, they correspond. Very good. Now the last stated objective that I'll share with you is the full employment of labor and other factors of production. The full employment of labor and other factors of production. Do we create a situation whereby everybody is gainfully employed? 
Do we exploit the natural resources that we have so that our economies grow and people have a better livelihood? What are some of the other factors of production? I mentioned labor. Yes, capital and land are also other factors of production. So when we use labor, we use our capital, we use our land, and we develop our economy, then it means that we are promoting economic integration. Did you get that one correct? I sure hope so. Now, I know you must be wondering, how are these objectives met? How does CARICOM really work? Who is really in charge of things? Well, the truth is, there is not just one person who is in charge or one body that makes decisions, but rather there is a governance structure that includes bodies, organs, institutions, and other stakeholders. Now, the organs are decision-making councils of the community with responsibility for key policy areas as set out in the Treaty of Chagoramas. At this point in time, we will be focusing on the principal organs of CARICOM. When I say principal, I mean the most important ones, the ones that are very prominent, very significant. And the first principal organ we'll discuss is the Conference of Heads of Government. The Conference of Heads of Government, which is the supreme organ of the Caribbean community. Supreme. It's the most important one. The Conference of Heads of Government consists of heads of government of the member states. In other words, it is made up of the various prime ministers and executive presidents who head their country's government. So when we talk about the Conference of Heads of Government, we're talking about Guyana's Executive President being part of that conference. We're talking about the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago being part of that conference. We're talking about the Prime Minister of Barbados being part of that conference. We're talking about the President of Suriname being part of that conference. So basically, it's all the heads of state of the different CARICOM member states that make up the conference of heads of government now the conference usually meets twice per year it is chaired by one of the heads of government and the chairmanship is rotated so if the conference is meeting in this particular month then one of the heads of state will chair the meeting and the next time the conference meets another head of state will chair the meeting in that sense everyone gets an opportunity to chair the meeting. Now that we know that the Conference of Heads of Government is the supreme organ of the Caribbean community, I'm sure you're wondering what are the functions of the Conference of Heads of Government? Well, there are many, and one we'll look at has to do with issuing directions to the Community Council of Ministers, which is another principal organ of the Caribbean community institutions and associate institutions of the community about the policies to be pursued in order to achieve the community's objectives. Now some examples of the institutions that make up CARICOM are the Caribbean Agricultural and Research Development Institute, CARDI, the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, and the Caribbean Public Health Agency. Now, these institutions must be governed and they have a task and their tasks are usually mandated by the policies of the Conference of Heads of Government. For example, think of the pandemic that we're experiencing. Of course, the Conference of Heads of Government would have met and discussed how they're going to deal with the health challenges in the region. After making a decision, then they'll contact an institution like the Caribbean Public Health Agency. So there you have it. We see how instrumental the Conference of Heads of Government is as it relates to the functioning of the different institutions of CARICOM. Another function of the Conference of Heads of Government 
has to do with negotiating and signing treaties with countries and international organizations on behalf of the community. So it's not Guyana signing a treaty and Barbados signing a treaty individually. It's the conference of heads of government that signs the treaty on behalf of the Caribbean community. And that's how we're able to foster economic integration with countries that are not part of the region. Now, like any organization that is governmental in nature, the Caribbean community needs money to operate, to function. Therefore, the Conference of Heads of Government makes financial arrangements for meeting the expenses of the community. Now, for example, the Regional Development and Funding of the Caribbean Court of Justice. All right? So we see whereby the Conference of Head of Government they have a budget in place. They decide on how much money they're going to allocate for these various institutions. Now, do you know that the Conference of Heads of Government functions like a quasi-cabinet? When I say quasi-cabinet, I mean it's similar to a cabinet that different countries have. For example, in Guyana, we have a cabinet. We have our president or executive president who has different ministers who are responsible for different portfolios. We have a minister of health, a minister of education, a minister of tourism, a minister of security. Similarly, CARICOM operates in that way because the conference of heads of government the members who are part of the Conference of Heads of Government have different responsibilities, different portfolios for areas such as services including information technology and communications, tourism, the single market and economy, labor, agriculture, and sustainable development. Now, can you take a wild guess and say what portfolio Guyana's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, is responsible for as being part of the Conference of Heads of Government, as being somewhat like a minister in the Kwasi cabinet? Yes, agriculture. Doesn't that make sense that Guyana is responsible for agriculture within the Caribbean region? That's because we are considered to be the breadbasket of the region. We really produce a lot on a large scale more than the other CARICOM countries. So Guyana is responsible for agriculture, agricultural diversification, and food security. Now another principal organ of CARICOM is the Community Council of Ministers. The council is made up of ministers who hold portfolio for community affairs in their respective member states. The council is responsible for coordinating the member states' activities in the areas of economic integration, functional cooperation, and external relations. Now, some countries have a Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. For example, Trinidad and Tobago has a Ministry of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs. It therefore means that the Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs will be part of the Community Council of Ministers. Now, Guyana does not have a Ministry of CARICOM Affairs. We have a Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Nevertheless, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is part of the Community Council of Ministers because he or she is responsible for foreign affairs as it relates to the region, as it relates to CARICOM. Now that we've looked at the two principal organs of CARICOM, being the Conference of Heads of Government and the Community Council of Ministers, let us now shift our attention to the CARICOM Secretariat. Many people think that the CARICOM Secretariat is the principal decision-making body of CARICOM. And as we've seen, that distinction goes to the conference of the heads of government. So what does the CARICOM Secretariat do? The CARICOM Secretariat, on the other hand, 
is the principal administrative organ of CARICOM and as such it assists the community organs and institutions to carry out their objectives now take for example a school setting who are the ones who actually teach you who are the ones who make the decision it may be the principal the teachers the board of management right they would be the decision makers now the administrators of your school might be the secretary the one who is responsible for printing the materials, ensuring that meetings are being conducted, take telephone calls, plan a budget, and so forth. Similarly, CARICOM works in a similar sense. The CARICOM Secretariat is the principal administrative organ. Now, what are the functions of the CARICOM Secretariat? The CARICOM Secretariat collects, stores, and disseminates to the member states of the CARICOM community information relevant for the achievement of its objectives. It does record keeping, it stores, it collects and gathers information, it does research, and then it disseminates the information for the benefit of the Caribbean community. Now, the CARICOM Secretariat also prepares the draft budget of the community for examination by the Budget Committee. The CARICOM Secretariat also services meetings of the organs and bodies of the community and take appropriate follow-up action on determinations issuing from such meetings. So when the conference of heads of government meet and they come to Guyana for their meeting, the CARICOM Secretariat ensures that the meetings are held to the highest standards as possible. And then any decisions that are taken by the conference of heads of government must be followed up by the CARICOM Secretariat, who is going to inquire whether these member states actually implement decisions that are taken. Now, I know you know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Where is the CARICOM Secretariat located? Yes, the CARICOM Secretariat is located in Guyana, and it's definitely something for us to be proud of. As we mentioned earlier, Guyana is one of the founding members of CARICOM. Now that we've reached the end of this lesson, let's recap. The Treaty of Chaguramas, 1973, which established CARICOM, is made up of two agreements. One deals with the Caribbean community and the other the common market. The Treaty of Chaguramas came into effect on the 1st of August, 1973. The four main pillars of CARICOM are economic integration, foreign policy coordination, human and social development, and lastly, security. There are 15 member states of CARICOM and 5 associate members. The Conference of the Heads of Government is the supreme organ of the Caribbean community. The Community Council of Members is another principal organ of CARICOM. The CARICOM Secretariat is the principal administrative organ of CARICOM and the CARICOM Secretariat is located in Guyana. I do hope that you found this session to be very informative. Stay tuned until next time. I'm Albert Inshinali. Do take care and remember to mask up.